I have clicked onto the Global Tropical Area for May the 21st, 2024, the second one of today. As is always the case in these videos, thought that expression are mine alone, and in making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look to your local office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So we're going to be talking about two systems today. We're going to first talk about Tropical Cyclone Ely as it comes right towards the coastline of Kenya. And then we'll talk about the North Indian Ocean as we have some development likely there uh, sometime this week. But that will be later in the video. I'll leave a timestamp to that if you want to skip ahead to that portion of the video. But you can see Ely here off the coastline of Kenya still. And the system, we're still just watching in real time to see if we're going to get the system to come right towards the coastline or if it's going to recurve just in time to miss a direct hit on the landmass. Uh, you can see that the system is not moving all too fast. The center of circulation is where these deep convective bursts are, right in the center there. And you can see this is a loop over the past four hours just about, and it's not really moving all too much. The beginning is about here, the end of the loop is right about here. So we have what looks to be maybe a more northwesterly motion here of the storm. Now this could be a sign that maybe the storm is in the process of making that northward turn that we talked about in my earlier today video. Um, but this could also be different to what's happening at the actual surface. Uh, sometimes infrared imagery can be a little bit misleading on, in terms of exactly where the storm's tracking, especially when you don't have a cleared out eye like in stronger cyclones. But regardless, the system is still getting uncomfortably close to the landmass, and the system will, as it comes right towards the coastline, continue to bring some heavy rain and thunderstorm showers across the region here in Kenya. You can already see that here in these greens and yellows coming ashore, and these can be stronger thunderstorms that could have some gusty winds within it, and some uh, heavy rainfall that could easily lead to flooding issues along this part of the coastline and even areas further inland. As we do have flow aloft that is favoring some of these storms coming ashore and uh, they may persist, especially if the storm does get further west, they may persist further inland and that could cause more issues here. And especially if we get, uh, hopefully we don't, but if we do get uh, say a band that trains over one area, you could get a lot of rainfall in a short period of time here, and that could easily cause a lot of flooding issues. That's one of the common, most common issues with tropical cyclones is you just get a stalling band of heavy rainfall, and that just could lead to very significant flooding issues. Now, the system uh, right now, like I said, is slowing down, and this is good news for Kenya because we do have wind shear in place that is going to work against the system. One reason that I think, and that this still holds true, that the system has really maintained itself over the past day is we have a very strong outflow pattern here off towards the west. And we also have an upper ridge. It's a little weaker than it was about 12 hours ago, but we had an upper ridge here that had helped some outflow off towards the south and east. This bridge is weakening, and now the storm is also slowing down. And you can see in the thunderstorms here, all of their tops are getting blown off towards the west. And this is outlining that wind shear that we have in place. There's a big upper high uh, across southern Africa, and this is the northern extent of that high. And this is all just a bunch of easterly flow cutting across a storm. Now, it's not the strongest flow overall, but with the storm stalling out here, or at least slowing down quite a bit, uh, this shear is going to begin taking more of a detrimental impact to the storm. And hopefully we can get more of this dry air that you see right here off towards the north and east of the system. Hopefully we can get this more punched into this core. Again, you do see, like I put it out 12 hours ago, we have what appears to be this drier slot south of the eye. Maybe this is that dry air still trying to get into the center, but it hasn't been successful so far. And as long as it's not successful, and as long as we have a fairly well-built core here that it has, this system should continue a more westerly component of movement. And it's possible that if it does maintain that long enough, the system could get very close to the coastline of Kenya, and maybe we could see a landfall out of this. Now, of course, if it weakens before then, we could see the system recurve just offshore, and then we don't see a landfall. But of course, the storm center is not just one fine point. It's a large area 
of disturbed thunderstorms. You can see that here on this loop. This entire area is a lot of heavy rainfall and gusty winds. So if you have the center here, but that circle there, you've got significant rainfall along the portions of the coastline and getting inland into Kenya. And that can cause, once again, a lot of flooding issues uh, for areas along the coast and inland. Alongside gusty tropical wind, uh, tropical storm force winds, I don't know if we'll see cyclone force winds, but tropical storm force winds, I'd say, are a decent possibility here. You can see that flow here that I mentioned from that upper high here in the 200 millibar flow map from the GFS. You can see all this blue in the streamlined plot uh, coming towards the west uh, over the system. And you can see the steering flow in the sounding from the GFS is not overly strong. We've got only a steering flow of about three knots. That's very slow overall. And you can see the reason why. If you look at the hodograph, we've got several different uh, levels of steering throughout the troposphere. And you can see that the net effect of this is just a very slow track uh, overall here. And you can see the shear increasing as well with max shear values getting towards 30 knots. So we'll continue to watch this system, make sure it does eventually weaken. I think it will be weakening over time. It looks like, especially with it slowing down, uh, we are about to see the system finally decay. But what a remarkable storm it has been. And if you're in Kenya, or stay safe, and I'll leave links to the Kenya Meteorological Department and the Tanzania uh, Meteorological Service as well, as we could see some uh, increased thunderstorm activity there, as well as this band offshore pushes ashore. And finally, here's the forecast come from Matteo France, showing that general idea that I talked about with the storm weakening, and then making that turn towards the north. But you can see the cone... Uh, it, is, it is brushing the part of the coastline here uh, in Kenya, and we could, again, be looking at maybe a very close pass here if the storm does stay a little bit stronger here along the coastline of Africa. But now we're going to move off to the North Indian Ocean, as we have a system developing in the Bay of Bengal that could be a threat to several areas as we go throughout the course of this week. This is Invest 99B, designated by the JTWC, and you could see... We have a little bit of a low here in the central Bay of Bengal. Now, this is not the full story of what's going on. We have a very large area of low pressure overall. So you can see here the water vapor loop. This is a zoomed out view of the entire Bay of Bengal. And we have just a ton of disturbed thunderstorm activity across the entire Bay of Bengal. As we have a very strong westerly wind burst taking place just north of the equator. And you can see what this is spawning here on the GFS low-level flow plot, where we have this very broad area of low pressure stretching from southern India all the way up towards Myanmar uh, into the abdomen sea. And the question is really, where does a compact area of low pressure develop along this entire area of low pressure? And models are still not sure here on exactly where that's going to happen. Reason being is that you could see, like I pointed out on water vapor, we just have a ton of convective activity going on here. And if any of these areas of convection really gets going and spins down an area of low pressure at the surface, that could become the dominant area of low pressure. But we don't know where that's going to happen. It could happen here. It could happen here. It could even happen here in the Arabian Sea, though models don't show this happening all uh, too much anymore. But there is still potential that we see something trying to form on the western end here in the Arabian Sea. And this makes it difficult for forecasting the exact track because if you have, say, a starting point here, the storm is going to be recurving off towards the northwest at a further east point. So we could be looking at a landfall in Myanmar or Bangladesh. Whereas if you get something maybe where 99B is, which is in the center of this entire low, we could be looking at a track into portions of India. And uh, if you go into the Arabian Sea, you could have different tracks in the southern India or even potentially into the Arabian Sea. We've seen some varying tracks on models there. Now, I will say overall, the more likely scenario is that the storm forms here in the Bay of Bengal. And the reasoning for that is where the westerly wind burst is maximized. You could see here in the horizontal or zonal wind anomaly plot for the GFS, the Westerly wind burst is maximized here across the, the southern Bay of Bengal, and we also have the strongest easterly trade winds north of that area. So you have 
the strongest cyclonic flow developing here in the Bay of Bengal. We still have some in the Arabian Sea, but the magnitude of it is highest here in the Bay of Bengal. And I think that's why we're going to see development most likely take place here in the Bay of Bengal. It's still something to watch, just to monitor here in the Arabian Sea, here in southern India. Uh, but models agree here that the most likely scenario for forming is here in the Bay of Bengal. And you can see that here on the European as well. But again, in terms of specifics, in terms of track, can't really talk about the all too much right here just because we don't know where the actual low is going to form. Impacts though, you could see already how broad this low is and we could be getting rainfall across several countries here no matter where the center forms. If we have even the center of circulation here off the coast of Myanmar, you could still be getting significant rainfall uh, in bands in India. That's how large the system may be when it does develop. So if you're in the Indian Ocean as an entirety, just make sure you monitor the system as it does develop. I'll leave links to the Indian Meteorological Department and other local weather offices that I can find or surrounding countries as the system does develop. And I'll have more videos throughout this week talking about the system as it does develop. But that's all that I've got for today. I may have another one later today talking about the West Pacific system, but I may hold off until tomorrow. Uh, and I also may have one talking about Ely if it is necessary. But again, if you're ahead of Tropical Cyclone Ely, make sure you stay safe ahead of the storm. And hopefully the storm is uh, going to weaken and recurve harmlessly away uh, before it does get all too close to the coastline of Kenya. As uh, we look at a storm getting probably the closest it's been to Kenya in historical record books. That's all that I've got for today. Thanks for watching.